Well, it's Bridget Moses here from Vincent and Bridget Moses Godly Encouragement here with some more Godly Encouragement for you. This week we are continuing our series on the promises of God. The promises of God, the wonderful promises found in God's Word. Today we are going to be talking about the promise of faithfulness, God's faithfulness, not ours. The promise of God's faithfulness. God is forever faithful. He can truly be trusted because he cannot lie. As Ron Carpenter, as I've heard Ron Carpenter put it, it's literally impossible for him to lie because what he says has to come to pass. If he said that the ocean was purple, then it would turn purple because God's word created the worlds. His word does not return to him void. It accomplishes that which it set out to do. Just like with love, Faithfulness is not what God does, but who God is. I'm going to say that again. Faithfulness is not what God does. It's who he is. It's God's promise to us to be faithful, even when we aren't, which is such a wonderful promise. Trust me, I've, I've benefited from that promise time and time again on my walk um, with God. And I'm sure that there will be times where I may even uh, benefit from that again as we walk because none of us are perfect. We're all growing and there's always a tug of war, a constant um, yielding and surrendering to God's will um, that we have to walk through on the way to our promised land, to, to the uh, fullness of what he has promised us for our purpose and his calling on our lives. Uh, God is continually faithful to Israel, even or which we've been grafted into, even though, even through all of their doubting, complaining, dreading, fearing the nations surrounding them, disobedience, and in their continually going after other gods. God has continued to be faithful. Since God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, he will continue to be faithful to us as well. God's faithfulness is so powerful. It is an anchor that we can hold on to as we go through the trials of life. We are going to need God's faithfulness. We're gonna to have to latch on to his faithfulness because God will give us a word. He'll give us a, a promise um, that he says that we're going towards. He'll give us like the next step. And as we're on the way to that next step, everything will go in the opposite direction everything. It will look nothing like what God has shown us in our spirit, man. So that is where our faith is proven. That is where endurance is proven. That is where all of these um, things are proven. And God, we, we need to hold on to his faithfulness. Sorry, I got to plug in my phone here. Uh, the battery is lower than I expected. There we go. Um, so we have to hold on to his faithfulness. We have to latch on to it really, really tightly at times because sometimes it's going to seem and the enemy will come in and say, see, God's left you. God didn't say that. You just thought he said that. But God didn't say that. And the people around you will be telling you the same thing because Satan works through the people around you. And you have to hold on to that promise. You have to hold on to it and lock on to God's character his his that he's loving that his plans for us are good and his faithfulness that he can't lie and he is forever faithful it's who he is it's who he is it's unlike anybody that we've ever encountered in the earth because god is who he says he is period there's no gray area there's no you know well maybe no god is exactly who he said he is in his word so he can be trusted when that's why it's so important to get into the Bible and learn about God through his word, because we learn about the attributes of his character through his word. And then we get to understand those and learn those by experience as we walk through the trials of life. And he is faithful. Victory is sure. It's not maybe as long as God promised it. It's already done. Already done. 
There's no, well, if, no, it's done. Now are there, there are some things that we need to do or to let go of on the way to done and walking in it? Yes. But we don't ever have to question whether what his will is because he gave it to us in the Bible. That is such a blessing. We know the end of the story. We know the end of the story. It all works out for our good, period. We have to hold on to that in spite of everything going, you know, awry around us. And know that God is forever faithful. He has to be true to himself. He will not be any, he can't be anything other than faithful because it's who he is. So take courage in that and know that if God said it, it's established, period. All of his promises are yes and amen. And that means, yes, he's faithful. Let's get into our scriptures for today. Lamentations 3, 22 through 24 in the ESV. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great, great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. Now, that's a decision. Anytime we hear about the will, it's, it's a decision. I will hope in him. Regardless of all the hopelessness around me, I will hope in him. I will be a prisoner of hope, as Paul said. I will hope in him. Psalm 25, 10 in the ESV. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies psalm 26 uh, 2 and 3 in the esv prove me O lord and try me test my heart and my mind for your steadfast love is before my eyes and i walk in your faithfulness so even if we don't fully believe that he's faithful we can trust his word because he cannot lie so even if we don't feel like he's being faithful to us right now, even if we feel abandoned, even if we feel like he's forsaken us, which he won't because he promises he will never leave us nor forsake us, right? So, and we can't go based on how we feel because our understanding is so limited. Our understanding is so limited. God will never leave us nor forsake us, which means he will never physically leave us and he will never forsake us, turn his heart away from us or turn away from us. These are promises that are sure and steadfast, more sure than the nose on your face because they're eternal. The nose on your face is gonna fall off at some point when you are in the ground and you're no longer housed in your body and you're with the Lord or separated from the Lord if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Um, but his promises are sure. They're the most concrete thing that you can ever count on is the promises of God. That's the truth. Uh, Psalm 33, verse four in the ESV, for the word of the Lord is upright and all his work is done in faithfulness, all of it. There's nothing left out of all. It's all done in faithfulness. Psalm 100, verse 5 in the ESV, For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. Every generation, God is faithful to. Uh, we might not be, but he always is. Psalm 36, 5 in the ESV, Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Psalm 57, 10 in the ESV, for your steadfast love is great to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. It's good repeating. It's just in a little slightly different form. That's actually quite often uh, in scripture, that, uh, that verse. Psalm 89, or that phrase, I should say. Um, Psalm 89, 14 in the ESV, righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Psalm 89, 31 through 33 in the ESV, if they violate my statutes and do not keep my commandments, then I will punish their transgression with the rod and their iniquity, iniquity with stripes. But I will not remove from him my steadfast love or be false to my faithfulness. Look at that. 
even in disobedience, even in rebellion, God says he will not remove his love or his uh, love from us or be false to his faithfulness. God is a God of order. He is a God who is bound to his covenant, bound to his word. He's not like man. He can't shift or change his mind. God never, never changes his mind. Um, well, I mean, in that sense to where, uh, about what he's established, um, God has changed his mind, such in the case of Hezekiah, where, you know, God told, um, Isaiah to go tell Hezekiah that he was going to die. And Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and repented and said, you know, Lord, I've served you. Please don't let me die. And God, before Isaiah got out of the court of the um, palace, God told Isaiah to go back and tell him he'd give him another 15 years. Um, so God does change his mind when it comes to um, things like that. But where his will is established, he doesn't. Psalm 86, 15 in the ESV, but you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding, not just, not just having, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. God abounds in steadfast love and faithfulness. That's pretty amazing. We do not even understand the limits of that steadfast love and faithfulness, um, but we can see evidence of it through scripture, all throughout scripture. Deuteronomy 7, 9 in the ESV, Know therefore that the Lord your God is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. That's 4,000 years. Or wait, yeah. A thousand gener... No, that's 40,000 years. Yeah, 40,000 years. That's a lot of years. A lot of generations. That means endless. I don't even know that there's going to be a thousand generations in the earth ever. Which means God is saying, uh, I'm faithful. To the end, to the end, end, end. From the beginning to the end, I'm faithful. That's just who, how it is and who I am. Second Timothy 2.13 in the ESV. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. If we are without faith, faithless. He remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Whew. And that's a mic drop right there. That is a mic drop right there. What an exclamation point on the message for today. God is faithful. He can't be anything other than faithful, which is awesome news for us because... I haven't been faithful all the time. I've gone after other things, lesser things like food or, you know, I've talked about my struggle with food on here. Um, and, you know, I, I am, you know, God is working on me. He's working on me. Um, I know he's already given me the victory over food because we already have the victory. Where we struggle with the victory is here not here. Here is your, your spirit, your core, your lab, your heart, your cardia. This is where the core is. This is where our spirit is housed. It's where a Holy Spirit resides in our core. He lives and works in us. How amazing is it? I just got to brag on my God. How amazing is it that we have God living inside of us? As long as you've confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you're saved. You're sealed by the Holy Spirit. You have him living in you. He can't get any closer to you because he lives in you. Wow. He makes his home in us, in the temple of man. In the hearts of man, his word is written and inscribed upon our heart. Our body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. There's no longer a need 
offer the sacrifice of bulls, rams, goats, and doves because God has made his home in us. In us. How faithful is that? That means wherever we go, we take God with us. We are God bear. We bear his, not only do we bear his image, but we house his spirit. That's why we have to take such good care of our bodies. And I, I confess, I have not done so. Like I said, I'm a former addict. I've destroyed, I, I had no regard for my body or my health for the longest time because of what I put in it and what I, how I treated my body and how I neglected my body. And God has been teaching me through his faithfulness that I need to keep my body free from impurities because it's his temple. It's where he lives. Would I really want to put God in a, in a junky place? If Jesus was staying in my, physically staying in my actual home, would I have it be messy for him? Would I have it be unkempt? Would I have it be um, full of clutter and full of uh, just, you know, would I give him a bunch of junk food when he was staying at a guest as, my, as a guest at my house? No. Why do I then think it's okay to do those things in the natural to myself? Because he is wherever I go. He's wherever I go. He's wherever you go. As long as you've confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. He's wherever you go. It helps us to put things in perspective a little bit when we think about it that way. But even as we walk through those things, because wherever you're at, there's no shame in it. There's no condemnation. Do not take that from what I'm saying. I'm just simply making us aware in myself too. I'm saying ouch right now myself. So don't, don't get it twisted. I'm not, I'm not coming at you. I'm not coming for you right now. But I'm just letting you know that God loves us so much and he doesn't want us to take care of the temple for him, for his sake. It's for our sake. It's for our benefit. It's so that we can walk in the fullness of intimacy with him and fullness of his calling for our life. So that we can love our families as he loves us because he's a loving father and he wants to teach us how to be loving parents to our children. He wants to teach us to be excellent in every area, not because he's some, you know, harsh taskmaster, but because he knows the benefits that come from it. And he wants us to experience the exceedingly abundant life that Jesus died. Such a terrible and horrific death in order to give us access to. But he's given us the access. Now it's on us. He's been faithful. He's given us the access. And he's faithful to honor the commitments of that access on his end. Everything is our decision now. What he's done is finished. Now will we lay hold of the promises of God with our faith? By act, faith is um, a heart belief that we act upon. Will we do that? Or will we squander things that belong to us out of either you know, ignorance, which just means not knowing, um, or carelessness? Um, and I know none of us really want to be careless um, or comfort of the familiar. Because it's not always easy laying hold of the promises of God. There's a sacrifice that goes with much of it. Um, either sacrificing our understanding, um, our time, our will, our desires. But I guarantee you, whatever you sacrifice will never, ever compare to what God has for us on the other side of it. Never. 
He loves us so much. And what he has for us is exceedingly and abundantly above all we can ask, think, or imagine. God's plans for us are good. To give us a future, and a, or not for harm, to give us a future and a hope. That's what God has for us. And will we lay hold of his promises? He's already made them available. They're there. They're not going anywhere, whether we take, them, take advantage of them or not, whether we lay hold of them or not. They're still there. And God doesn't change his mind. He doesn't just take it away. It's not our righteousness that earns those things, that earns access to them. It's only the blood of Jesus. We're all qualified. It doesn't matter if you just came into the, into the family or you've been here your entire life. We all have the same exact access as long as you've confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You have the same access as somebody who's been in the, uh, belonged to the kingdom for 60 years. If you belong for six seconds, you got the same access. But we got to learn how to walk in it. So let's do it together. See you next time. Love you. Bye.